We're coming up on 6.30 on WKYT This Morning. Lexington police are interviewing a young man who was shot this morning near the UK campus. Hear from community members who are calling for change after a deadly shooting during a popular tournament at a Lexington Park. And as if the ex-Wildcat needed any more money, we'll have some details on Anthony Davis's new big NBA contract. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you from WKYT News and welcome in here on the 1st of July. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It's been, of course, a stormy start to the month. It's been a stormy week, really. That trend could be continuing today. Going to be watching for that possibility. And meteorologist Micah Harris is tracking it for us. This is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day as we keep a watch on things. Micah? Yeah, because we could have a stray cell this afternoon. And notice the keyword stray. This is a very, very low end severe weather threat today. And look, just because you have lightning and a big booming thunderstorm over your house does not mean it is a severe thunderstorm. Lightning has nothing to do with it. It's about that wind. It's about hail. Uh, you can get that tornadic activity too, but for the most part, we're going to stay away from all that for the most part. We're looking at a few rumbles of thunder as we slide into the afternoon. Most of this is just going to be beneficial rain. You'll get heavy downpours, and also that lightning is probably my main concern today as we slide off into the overnight and into tomorrow. It quiets down for the moment because we get into the afternoon tomorrow and it picks right back up. I think tomorrow and actually Friday are your better chances of rain. I'll show you that. We have some heavy rainfall numbers coming in, and I'll give you that data in just a few minutes. All right, and here's what's happening here on this Wednesday morning. We're beginning now with a crime alert in Lexington. Police interviewing a young man who was shot this morning near the UK campus. Now, apparently, he's not saying very much. Someone found the victim crawling out in the road on South Broadway and Cedar Streets. They think he was shot behind the Lex apartments. Police say the young man was shot in the leg. They say he he may have lied to police even about his name. And again, he's uh, not telling them much uh, that is helping uh, with the probe, at least at this point. Well, new this morning, we're tracking a crime alert after an overnight break in at a Lexington store. Police say five people kicked in a back door at Life's Journey Clothing Store on North Forbes Road. The suspects stole hats, t shirts, and other items. Police say they also damaged one of the surveillance cameras. Well, today, the family of a murdered Lexington man will speak out publicly for the first time. Kwame El Amin died after a Father's Day shooting at Douglas Park. And following his death, community leaders are now trying to decide the future of that basketball tournament that's been quite a tradition in Lexington. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk with reaction from a big meeting last night. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill. And community leaders are still trying to figure out where that basketball tournament will be played. A coach for one of the teams in the Dirt Bowl basketball tournament says if police do not step up their patrols, their players will not return to Douglas Park. For now, the basketball games have been moved to Dunbar Community Center on North Upper Street. That's where organizers of the annual basketball tournament met with the community last night to talk about whether they will continue to play basketball games in Douglas Park. The games have been played there since the 1960s. A Father's Day shooting during a game at the park is now sparking these community safety conversations. While crowds of people were watching a game at Douglas Park on the 21st, someone opened fire and shot five people. One of them, a 42-year-old food truck operator, Kwame El Amin, was shot in the neck. He died several days later. While police are trying to figure out who the killer is, concerned people in the community are debating the safety of Douglas Park. When I pick up one of my 10-year-olds the very next morning and they crying their eyes out about how they don't want to die and can't go to the park, that concerns me. If we take this out of Douglas Park, what happens next? Do we quit having roots and heritage? Do we quit having the 4th of July? City officials tell us they will start talking with coaches, players, and referees to figure out where they will play the dirt bowl. As for Elamine's family, they are expected to speak publicly for the first time at 9 a.m. at police headquarters. We're told they are still searching for answers and will be asking anyone with information about the shooting to come forward. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, obviously a lot of emotions and strong opinions there, and we'll see what the future holds. It's coming up on 634 on WKYT, and new this morning, the widow of a prominent Pulaski County lawyer is now suing Eastern State Hospital. 
Clinton and Abbott pleaded guilty but mentally ill this week to last year's shooting of Mark Stanziano. According to the lawsuit, the Herald Leader reports that an Abbott was released from Eastern State 44 days before he killed Stanziano. That lawsuit goes on to say that an Abbott made threats to kill Stanziano while at the hospital, but doctors did not warn the lawyer nor notify the police. Protests are expected to continue today in Rowan County, where the county clerk is refusing to issue any marriage licenses. Kim Davis says same-sex marriage is against her Christian beliefs, so she has stopped issuing marriage licenses to anyone, despite the U.S. Supreme Court's recent decision to legalize gay marriage nationwide. Governor Steve Beshear says all county clerks are required by law to uphold the Supreme Court's ruling. At least one same-sex couple was denied a marriage license yesterday in Moorhead. U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he expects the issue of religious liberties to lead a series of lawsuits. Speaking in Rockcastle County, the senator from Kentucky said some people with deep religious convictions will refuse to provide services to same-sex couples. Well, I think the Supreme Court has ended the issue of gay marriage, but has opened a new chapter in this whole discussion. Well, Senator McConnell was also asked about the Jefferson Davis statue in the state capitol rotunda. He says he thinks it's better suited for a museum. Well, it's not just Kentucky. Same-sex couples also running into roadblocks in Texas. The state's attorney general told clerks and judges they may object to issuing marriage licenses if it goes against their religious beliefs. Experts say contesting the law on religious grounds could eventually return the issue to the Supreme Court. In Knoxville, the owner of a hardware store says that he reserves the right to refuse service to same-sex couples. This week, Jeff Amix put up a sign that said, quote, no gays allowed. He changed that sign the next day to say something a little less harsh, but his message has not changed. He says gay men and women are not welcome in his store. Would you let a child molester come in your home and hang around your kids? Of course not. Then why should I let a homosexual come in and hang around me? It's against my nature. It's against my, my way of life. It's against my religion. I am sorry. Amex is getting yeah. calls from around the country. Some of support. Others are complaining about uh, what is going on there. But the Baptist minister says that he feels that he has to stand up for his beliefs. A trial is set to begin today for two people accused of killing a Lexington teenager. Dominique Godfrey and Deontay Hayes are both charged with murder for the death of 16-year-old Chaz Black. They have both pleaded not guilty. Police say Godfrey and Hayes shot Black and two other teens at an apartment on Palumbo Drive in 2012. Their trial is expected to begin at 8.30 this morning. A Southern Kentucky family is demanding justice after the murder of a loved one there. Police found 38-year-old David Mason dead outside of his home in Bell County two weeks ago. Investigators now say someone shot Mason in the head. No arrests have been made in that. The time this morning, 6.37. Yeah, 6.37 is the time. Thanks for updating us. Two women who are part of a family featured in a documentary have been arrested in Kentucky. And we'll tell you more about this story. Martin County deputies arrested Sue Bob White along with her sister Virginia White on Tuesday morning. The duo walked into the sheriff's department wanting to pay the bond of a relative who was in jail. While there, deputies say Sue Bob White made comments about being in the documentary The Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. Deputies ran their names and discovered Sue uh, had active warrants. Heads up, Kentucky Utilities customers, starting today, your electric bill will be going up. Not good news. The Herald Leader reports that bills will increase on average by $9 a month. That means KU will collect an additional $125 million a year. The money will help to pay to expand a hydroelectric dam, among other investments. So obviously not great for the pocketbook, but, you know, they have to invest in infrastructure long term. Right. That's, uh, that was the, uh, the argument they made when they went before right. the Public Service Commission. Yeah. Well, new overnight, we have learned that the New Orleans Pelicans now have officially signed former U.K. star Anthony Davis to a contract extension. The 22-year-old signed a five-year, $145 million contract. That's according to ESPN. Davis is coming off a season where he averaged more than 24 points, about 10 rebounds, and almost three blocked shots per game. So uh, he's worth it, too. The <laughs> Chunk of change. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Whew.
Look at that. Let's check to see how traffic is moving. Hopefully, uh, not too many issues for you this morning. Let's go out to Officer Don with a check on live drive traffic. Hey, Don, good morning. Hey, good morning. Slowest traffic right now is on Lease Town Road approaching the circle, and that just a stalled car that started a chain reaction slowdown there. That should be cleared in the next 10 minutes or so. Versailles Road, just check that past the airport and toward town. It looks like we're in pretty good shape. Inner and outer loops of the circle, no major complaints just yet. Let's get a live look at Broadway and High Street in and outbound this morning. Okay, past that point. Uh, now, on our Waze map, looking good on the north side of town. We'll focus on that. Inner and outer loops of the circle between Boardwalk over to Winchester Road. A couple live drivers on the way in reporting no problems. Can't see a slowdown on a new circle around Leestown and a new circle in Versailles Road, the exit ramp there through the construction zone. Now, back to you in the studio. All right, Don, thank you so much. Hope it's a good ride in for everybody. And we have a lot more news coming up on this first day of July on WKYT this morning. And some folks will do anything for good luck. Meet the stranger. One mayor was willing to marry in hopes of bringing good fortune to his town. Things look good outside. I'm not really seeing an issue whatsoever, but more so for the afternoon, and it really picks up after today. And I'll show you that rainfall forecast coming up.